Abaddon versus Jasmine Allure. This is short. I mean, it's a squash. Abaddon mm -hmm. is being a little more than just a zombie now because she's running wild and uh, clobbers the ref and apologizes profusely. I did not realize Abaddon was capable of guilt or, frankly, any <laughs> other human emotion. But uh, acknowledge the wrong thing was done there. Got the win with that leg drop DDT thing. And uh, then things get weird. The lights go out. Julia Hart is in the ring. And she lays down the belt between the two of them. Abaddon attacks. They have a uh, scuffle for a few minutes. Abaddon gets the better of things and grabs the belt. But then Sky Blue arrives. And Sky Blue and Abaddon have a stare down. They seem to be in sync, in fact. Moving the head back and forth together. But as soon as Abaddon turns away from Sky... Sky attacks, and now Sky Blue and Julia Hart are a team. They are double teaming Abaddon until Thunder Rosa makes a save from the announce desk. Okay. First of all, a quick note on Thunder Rosa. She was dressed to announce, so she had like a pink jumpsuit on or something. It was, it was, sure. It was an outfit to wear. Uh, no face paint. And None. Usually, face painted wrestlers, even if they're just doing commentary or promos, will have their face paint on. Maybe it's just a one time thing. Maybe she'll have the face paint on when she returns, but uh, uh, just a notable appearance change there. All right. So, many, many months ago, Julia Hart spat black mist at Sky Blue, right? Correct. And Sky Blue started to get a little more evil here and there, and a little more evil, and a little more evil, and started wearing all black. And mm -hmm. threw away the baseball hat and put on an evil crown. And we all thought she was going to be evil. Yeah. And then she wasn't. Right? And then she was, like, attacking Julia Hart and challenging her the last... Uh, Correct. And, and on this show, she was even... One of the announcers said, maybe we should call her Sky Black. Well, that was the, by the end of this, they said that. And I honestly, I don't know. As we're sitting here right now, I do not know if that's officially no. her name or not. And in fact, uh, she she's been doing the eye makeup where it's black and very smeared and stuff, and she didn't have that this time. Um, she just looked like a dare I say a, a very attractive woman. She didn't. So, there was nothing creepy about. Of course, there's nothing creepy about Julia either. They keep saying, you know, oh, she's so creepy. No, she's a hot blonde girl, and now she's she's with a hot brunette girl. <laughs> Yeah, so, 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 yeah, more to the point, Sky Blue was teasing a heel turn, and teasing a heel turn, and teasing a heel turn, and then the moment of truth didn't complete the heel turn. No. And I thought it was over, and then she comes out here and does the heel turn. Is it? I don't know. It didn't. When you have a heel turn... You walk away from the television after you're done watching. Goes that girl turned heel. Yeah, I did not do that. I don't know what the deal is. I it feels like they've just been running in place. It's not that there are no stories in the AW. It's that sometimes the stories just make no sense, and uh, this is this is one of them. So Abaddon, and, and it, I was going to say it, it wouldn't take much to solidify that she's a heel. Perhaps she could do something. Oh, I don't know, heelish. And and evil. Well, that, that that hasn't happened really. I mean, she did attack Abaddon from behind here and betray her. But Man. God bless God bless Abaddon. This is not a sympathetic character. No, it's the living dead girl. <laughs> <laughs> that should be her music, by the way. <laughs> and not a bad song, actually. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> if Kevin Von Erich can come out to Ted Nugent, sure, and uh, Abaddon can come out to Rob Zombie. Mm -hmm. So the upshot of all this is when all of a sudden done, the smoke is cleared. Abaddon is a baby face. Lifelong friends with Thunder Rosa now. Apparently. Th Thunder Rosa is back. Sky Blue is apparently in the House of Black and may or may not have changed her, main, changed her name. I honestly don't know. She is in the House of Black. You don't know that for sure, do you, Vinny? I don't know. She left with <laughs> Julia Hart. They may yeah, just be that's... pals. Yeah. The acclaimed yeah. are back. The acclaimed are back. Not, not been seen since uh, the devil and his goons laid them out, threw them through glasses, I recall. So they're very pissed off. There was no rapping here. There was no comedy about making Max stand to the corner. These are three angry men. Whoever's under that mask are coming after you. Caster addresses MJF. I want nothing to do with you. You put us in danger and you didn't care. 
Uh, Bowen says, we're going to beat your Scooby-Doo asses the second we find out who you are. And then Top Flight and Action and Dreddy interu interrupt. He said, listen, we did not attack you, but we noticed you have those AEW Trios tag team titles. We're on a win streak. We want a title shot. And so the acclaimed accept for Collision next week in San Antonio. And the crowd boos the next weakness of it all. Mm. They wanted to see Action and Dreddy in Top Flight again. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say they are not going to have as good a match with the acclaimed as they had with Penta, Commander, and uh, Bakingo. I will just say it will be a, a thousand percent different match for sure. Yeah. And if I, although there's part of me that would love to see Daddy Ass have that same match, <laughs> that could only be entertaining. That one. Can Canadian Destroyer on the apron by Daddy Ass. I don't think so. Do you think he's more likely to give it or take it? Uh, give it for sure. Okay. No. <laughs> Orange Cassidy versus Brian Keith. My Loved first, this. That's my first time seeing Brian Keith in action. Seen clips of, clips of him online. He had a. They showed. They showed why he was here. He beat Jack Cartwheel at uh, Ring of Honor Zero Hour, and then at Final Battle advanced into the Survival of the Fittest Survival of the Fittest match. Had a great showing there. Although they were sort of point out, point out Kyle Fletcher emerged as the uh, ROH TV champion. So the first half of this is just Keith throwing chops and Orange doing his shtick. <laughs> And uh, it comes back. Orange is running wild. Hits a thousand DDTs as always. He goes to the top rope when uh, Keith does an Undertaker sit up, runs as a jumping headbutt from the mat to Orange on the top rope, and uh, they start running wild and training big moves. Uh, Orange hits the beach break. Keith hits a diamond dust. He tries a double underhook, something or other, but he gets mouse trapped for the win. It was a very good match. There were a couple of times here where Keith looked like it looked like he was not used to being in a ring this big. Like he was taking extra steps and running the ropes and things like that. Mm -hmm. But he has obvious, as they say in 2023, Riz. And uh, tremendous stage present, great stage presence, great great facials, a natural star. He tips his cowboy hat to Orange Cassidy in defeat. This was a win. Yeah, I've uh, I've heard of this guy. And I've heard nothing but good things about him. This is the first time I've actually seen him work. And I was racking my brain. Has anybody ever in professional wrestling done the gimmick of a bounty hunter? Uh, I don't believe Boba Fett was ever in the... In the, uh, the, the <laughs> no. Um, uh, IG-88. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Bosk! The world needs Bosk! <laughs> uh, I mean, there's been b bounty angles before. For yeah, sure, yeah. for sure, and, and they've been collected and paid off. But I don't think anyone's like, just done it uh, uh, full time as a as a full time stick. But uh, anyway, that was a win and a great great appearance following what must have been a great weekend for uh, for Branky. Also, I've I, I took note of this: if Orange Cassidy ever does his gimmick where he throws his hands in the air and then he puts his hands in your pockets, his pockets, you are to chop him as hard as you can. I would. My goodness, he chopped through this man. I think he bruised his spine. It, it was a mighty chop. Hey guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show, all of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.